Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Generating Income in Your Portfolio webcast. I'm Connie Hill. I'm sitting in for the Aileen Mike Fairborn, and I made a goof, so I need to go fix it real quick. All right, there's my, my goof is fixed. <laughs> Uh, he's a little bit under the weather, and I said I'd be happy to step in for him here today. If you were presented with an investment opportunity that said it would give you 90% of their net earnings, would you be interested in that? Mm, that could be intriguing, 90% of their net earnings. Okay, we are going to talk about such a product today. It is called Real Estate Investment Trust. Uh, the abbreviation for it is REITs, and we are going to go into details about it today. Now, I'm joined in the chat by Ben Watson. Ben, I'm happy you're here. He's going to help me field your questions as they come in. Go ahead. Uh, some of them I have to catch, and there might be others that Ben will back me up with. But as you have them, go ahead, chat those questions in. Now, those of you that are listening to this on the archive, and I know lots of you do, when you have questions, go ahead and put your questions down in the comment section of YouTube. I go back and review those every day. Make sure you get your question answered as well. Let's go through just a few brief disclosures here, and then we will get down to business. The information we talk about here today is intended for educational and informational purposes only. Do not consider it an individual recommendation of anything we might talk about, securities, strategy, or otherwise. Uh, Schwab does not recommend the use of technical analysis solely. They would encourage other types of research as well, which could include fundamental analysis. We're going to be using paper money here today. That's the downloaded software, Thinkorswim. It goes right on your computer. It's the most robust version. It's a little bit different than the web and different than the mobile versions. Investing involves risk, including the loss of principal. Past performance of any security or strategy does not guarantee future results or success. The risk of REITs are similar to those associated with direct ownership of real estate, such as changes in real estate values and property taxes, interest rates, cash flow of underlying real estate assets, supply and demand, and management skill and credit worthiness of the issuer. Now, this particular class is really focused on generating different streams of income and how we might be able to do that. And there are various ways to do that. And we're just going to focus, like I said, on one, which is going to be dividends received from real estate investment trusts. So that is going to be our focus of our income generation. And then, of course, we're going to look at some examples on the, port on the platform. We're going to be using Schwab.com as well as Thinkorswim here today. Now, let me just check real quickly. Make sure I haven't missed anything yet. All right, I think we're in good shape. Now, the different methods of genera generating income in your portfolio, the most common ones are listed here. And I know Mike spent a lot of time going through dividends, going through different strategies like selling puts and covered calls. As I looked at the history, it didn't look like REITs had been covered really recently, which is why I decided to go with that as our topic here today. Now. I'm going to give you a couple of resources. This first resource we're going to go to is Schwab.com. You don't need to have an account. In fact, you won't be logged into it in order to have access to the information. You actually have to not be logged in at all to be able to see this. So we're going to come over here to the web. And uh, let's see, that didn't work so good. There we go. Investing in real estate investment trusts. We're going to talk about what they are, some of the characteristics of them here. Now, I want you to notice I am not logged in. Now, I would copy the address over to you so that you could just click on it, but it is so long it will not make it through our little as many characters as we have in the chat that we can use. So <clears throat> I'm just going to give you a little bit of guidance here. Uh, so start uh, anywhere. You could be anywhere on the site and then just type in. R-E-I-T-S, REITs, okay? I'm doing it up there in that search window. When it comes up, 
you're going to see some different choices, just like if you were doing an internet search. And you're just going to pick this very first one, Real Estate Investment Trust, Charles Schwab. And we're going to go into a few details here. So let's talk about what exactly is a REIT. This might be new to some of you. You know, I've been trading for quite a while in the market and had not really run across real estate investment trusts. I had focused on different types of stocks, but not really focused. And I was kind of like, oh, this is really interesting when I ran across them. Now, I mentioned to you earlier, would you be interested in possibly investing in an asset if you knew 90% of their net earnings had to be paid out into a dividend. Well, that's the case with these real estate investment trusts, okay? 90% of those earnings by law have to be paid out. Now, when we're talking about, say, comparing that to a dividend type stock, and we're looking at companies that pay dividends, would we normally want them to spend 90% of their net earnings to pay out their dividend? Typically, we don't, right? Typically, we're like, we want them to have some leftover money. We want them to be able to uh, have some room to do business, right, or invest in new areas. But if all their earnings are going out to pay off the dividend, that could be a little bit risky for the shareholder. But with real estate investment trusts, they're kind of a different animal. And so uh, let's talk about maybe what some of the benefits are. Now, it's basically an, a, um, it's a, similar to a stock. It trades on the exchanges. It has a ticker symbol. We're, in fact, I'm going to show you several here. We're going to sh show you a scan where we go and find some what we might consider for the criteria. But just know that they are you know, that real estate investment trust, they've invested in certain types of properties, okay? And it's because of the cash flow that they generate off these properties that they turn out. And again, 90% of the net income needs to go to the shareholders in the form of the dividend. So there is the potential here to maybe have a better dividend than maybe what you could find on a dividend paying stock. Now we're going to go, we're going to look at an example of this. We're going to jump over to my Thinkorswim. And I have some sections here. Uh, this one, I have strong dividend stocks. These are some that have been in a portfolio, uh, not for a very long period of time, but for a period of time. And the reason that they were put in the portfolio is because they met a fairly strict criteria. One where, uh, the payout ratio was not super high. We don't want them to pay 90% of their net income to, to pay it out. In fact, we'd love to see it in a dividend stock to be significantly less than that. But I have some listed here and over here in my scratch pad, or not my scratch pad, but my watch list. I have all the current account positions and I've highlighted starting at JP Morgan and the column here is the yield. Okay, so let's see what we're yielding on this, at least these positions here. Uh, so 2.21% on JP Morgan, on NEE, it's about 3.6%. That's actually one of the healthier ones, it's 3.6%. Uh, let's see, T, AT&T, that actually I think is the highest of the group, 6.45%. Remember that when a stock price decreases and decreases, if it's paying consistently the same amount of dividend, but the price of the stock is going down, that is going to inflate the price of the yield. And so sometimes if a stock has really been downward trending for a long time, they could look like they have a fairly healthy uh, percent dividend. And it is a strategy to maybe go in and buy a stock like that cheap with the expectation that they're maybe at a bargain right now and they're going to recover. Okay, so that's AT&T. Uh, we have UBS has a 1.11% dividend, and then Valero has a 2.84% dividend. And hopefully these are pretty familiar ticker symbols to you. Okay, so if our highest one is 6.45, but we've got several threes, a couple of twos, <clears throat> you kind of get an idea of what might be common in this arena. So we kind of get an idea, okay, if we're looking maybe better for something better than maybe in our dividend portfolio. 
Okay, let's go back here to Thinkorswim. Uh, let's just talk about some of these additional benefits that we might have here. Uh, one of note is accessibility. Okay, now accessibility essentially means the ability for us to be able to get into an investment vehicle without buying shopping malls, commercial properties, real estate or uh, residential properties, right? We're not shelling out to buy those assets, right? And somebody else is building that portfolio and then we're just investing in that portfolio. So it gives us access to something that maybe typically as a retail traders, we might not really have access to. They can be quite diversified. I'm gonna also say they can uh, be very concentrated in a particular type of area, as far as the real estate investments go. Uh, the diversification here is diversification on your portfolio in that typically market cycles last about 5.5 5 and three quarters of a year for a market cycle. Real estate cycles are about 10 years plus. So that cycle lasts much longer than it does on uh, just the regular market. They can be a hedge to inflation if you would like them to be. What are some of the risks? Everything always has a trade-off, right? Everything can't just be rosy and have benefits without having some risk. So risks are real in these properties. Um, and they're going to reflect what's going on in the real estate market. So uh, basically up here, real estate risk is whatever happens to be going on with the real estate. If it's climbing in nature, if it's pulling back, if we're having a hard time filling biz businesses and buildings, yeah, that will impact the, the real estate investment trust. There could be interest rate risk, or maybe th these properties are tied in at a high interest rate level and might be more efficient for them if the interest rate were lower, right? We've got a lot of talk about that significantly in the last two years in the markets. Occupancy rates. If buildings aren't filled, whether they're residential or commercial, the, the profit for that REIT is really heavily tied to occupation rates. Okay, so that would be consideration. Geographic risk. What if that real estate investment trust only invested in residential apartments in Southern Florida, okay? That is very concentrated there, that geographic risk versus apartments buildings spread throughout the whole Eastern United States, okay? And then just business risk, you know, susceptible to whatever risk might happen in, uh, in that real estate market, okay? Now I'm gonna scroll down here just quickly, most REITs are divided into equity, commercial, residential, healthcare, and mortgage REITs, okay? Those are the five common types that we tend to see. Somebody who's trying to diversify their portfolio and they wanted to have different types of REITs might spread it out a little, right? Not just necessarily load up on healthcare REITs, but, you know, mix it up a bit. Now, how do we find some REITs? We're going to go over to, we're going to stay on Schwab. We're going to go to another part of Schwab. I'm going to show you a scan I created that brings back some uh, real estate trusts with that meet certain criteria. I built this in advance. I'm going to go out and we're going to say modify criteria so you can see what went into it. And I am going to... I'm going to go to my save screens and I'm just going to bring it up fresh. I was tweaking with it a little bit and I can't remember if what I have up here is fresh or, or if I had done some tweaking to it. Then I'm going to hit modify criteria so you can see better than trying to read this itsy bitsy print <laughs> right above my mouse, right? If I were you, I'd be like squinting, wouldn't be able to see it so well. So let's go to the modify the criteria and let's talk about what we have in here. The first thing we were looking for that we put into the screener is a yield over the last five years. Why might that be important? It is kind of informational, but what if you had a real estate investment trust over the last five years that say averaged 10%, but right now was only averaging 2.5%? That might be something that would cause concern, right? Why was it so good 
over the last five years and it's crummy now. I shouldn't say crummy, but lower, right? It's lower now. It, we might want to have some consistency there. So over the last five years, we put in here to have a minimum of 3% on whatever that was yielding uh, and higher. Okay, we didn't cap it at 6%, right? It can be greater than 6%. And then we looked at, okay, what is the annual dividend yield right now? You can have any threshold you want here, right? You can on the five-year average as well. The, what we went for in this particular screener was saying, let's look for a minimum of 4%. There, were all, there was only one dividend paying stock in the portfolio we were looking at on my, on my Thinkorswim holdings, right? And I think there maybe there were two that were above 4%. Right, AT&T was six point something percent. Uh, but what we're looking for here is just putting an absolute bottom. If you don't like a bottom of 4%, if you want yours to be 5% or you're good with two and a half percent, whatever that might be, you would build it in here to, to meet your criteria. And then it could be nice if this particular stock, this real estate, this REIT, if it were pretty much holding its own or slightly going up in terms of the overall value, in terms of its performance in the stock market. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, if we have stocks and we see the price dropping, 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 then that's when we have a tendency to see some of these really high dividends. And so we'll say, well, what we know about that is probably the base is eroding, right? It's paying the same amount of the dividend, but that percent is going up. And so if we see steadiness in the price, that can give us a little bit of ease of knowing, okay, the stock might be a stable place. This will, this REIT is, might be a stable place to, I'm going to say, park some money. Park in quotes, meaning invest into and plan to hold for a longer period of time. Typically, these are not vehicles that people uh, they can, they can trade them, uh, but more often than not with this strategy, they're planning on holding it for a period of time so that they can get those dividends. Now, let me check over here at the chat, see if there's any questions I need to answer. Okay, I think we are, I think we're in good shape. shape. I think I should mention what something Mike said out here in our chat, though. Uh, he, he said, very few people know that Ben sings. Ooh, yes, Ben does have a very nice, I think it's a baritone voice. He could correct me if I'm wrong. But yes, Ben is a singer as well. Okay, so this was our main criteria. And then what we did is we came down to uh, sectors and industries. And we focused on real estate. That is where we're going to find those REITs. And we just said, all the industries and the sub-industries. You could be picky if you wanted to, if you select here on the real estate, and you can see the different industry groups in there. This one doesn't have sub-industries, but you could pick and choose which kind of these REITs that you might be interested in. Uh, looks very similar to what we were looking at with the five that showed on the Schwab site. This gives a little bit more detail, but we're gonna just select all of them, all right? So this is our screener. I hope you've been able to take some good notes if this is something that's of interest to you. And uh, looks like it, uh, it took away the matches. There was 41 earlier. Let's see what we have right now. Uh, well, that's not pretty. Let's try this again. Oh, okay, finally they came up. How many are in here? I said show a 60, and this is showing, let's see if it refreshed it up here at the top, our results. Well, we have a group, all right? It is arranged alphabetically. And so then the question is, okay, well, if we have some, they kind of meet those loose, those loose parameters, then what do we do with them, okay? Uh, generally, people are going to make some decisions based on that, right? They may not consult a chart. It's not really a technical analysis type strategy, right? Trading in and out of things, yeah, you want to use your technical analysis, but investing and push, kind of parking some money in there, uh, you might not do so much. But what we're going to do is I'm going to say, 
a, a nice way to be able to look at a group of these is to put them on a watch list. So we're going to pop this out to Excel. I'm going to select here on Export CSV. CSV stands for Comma Separated uh, Value, I guess. And essentially, it's just the format uh, that typically those that uh, we can export, uh, how it groups it into different cells. So we're going to go ahead and just say Export to CSV. We're going to say OK. It's going to do its thing. Let's see what screen it's going to come up on. Sometimes I never know. It should come out right here at the top, I believe. He said, OK. Come on, don't let me down. It did it earlier. That's why I was looking on my other screen. Let's see if maybe it's hiding. All right, hiding behind here, hiding behind here. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's open up Excel. Let's just get a blank workbook. Let's try it again and uh, see if that won't cooperate for us. Maybe it wanted my Excel open. Okay, hey, export to CSV. We're going to say OK. Uh, we're limited here to 1,000 results. That's fine. <laughs> right, that's plenty. OK. Mm, let me just see if it's maybe hiding on my other screen here. And it doesn't look like it. Yeah, let's look over here. Yes, let's uh, let's get back here. Back here. Let's go to our little downloads here. All right, here's results. These are the ones I did earlier. I'm not sure why it's not generating it right now, but we didn't change the criteria at all from what we were doing. So let's go ahead. We're going to grab this one. You can see it said 53 minutes ago. Okay. Uh, it's going to bring back 20. No, this is going to bring back. We'll see how many it brings back. We'll just go ahead and open that up. There's our spreadsheet. Data will should pop in here. If it uh, if it will cooperate here, I don't know why it wouldn't. Let's see. There we go. It went to my other screen. So I'm dragging it over. Here we go. And I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So we can see the. if you wanted to play with the data, you could. And you can see uh, each of these columns, the information in there. What we're going to do is we're just going to take the ticker symbol and we're going to say page down. We're just going to highlight it. We're going to do a control copy. That puts it into your computer, short term memory. Then we're going to bring that into Thinkorswim. Then we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail. But if you had reason that you just wanted maybe to compare here first, you could look at this and you could see uh, what the annual dividend rate is compared to the five-year average. Okay, so say on this very first stock, AAT, five-year average is 3.95%. But right now, it's up to 6.33%. So some people might want to just kind of see what's going on there, see if this thing is below the 200-day moving average or see if it's been downward trending. Uh, just kind of make sure these numbers look decent, right? Look comfortable to you. You know, this next one down, AKR, they're pretty similar. The five-year and the actual, pretty close. So probably just hanging in there, we know we wanted the, the stock to at least have some improvement over the course of the year. All right, so we've got our ticker symbols. Let's come over here to Thinkorswim and go to our watch list. Let's make that big, go to our watch list. And we're going to say create watch list. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this REITs. And I'm just going to put today's date. So we are uh, March 12th today. I will date my watch list so I know when to go clean them up and how old they are. We're going to hit import here. And we're going to select on this radio uh, button, paste symbols from clipboard. When you select on that, you're going to see they are just going to kind of line up here, right? We know we have AT and, or AAT and then AKR. 
we kind of looked at those in that spreadsheet earlier. We are going to say, let's just say replace the current symbols. It really doesn't matter because it's a brand new watch list. We're going to go ahead and hit save, and then it's going to replace it over here so that that's the watch list that we're looking at. Okay. Now I put on here a column here for volume. Uh, let's go ahead and sort it by volume. And uh, this is good. I want to see the puny guys on top. All right. There aren't many puny guys. Uh, puny volume meaning, right, 6,000 shares traded today is not a great deal. So even though maybe it meets the other criteria, there's not minimum volume here that we might look for. Uh, BFS and OLP are on the lower side of things. You might have a threshold uh, that that's acceptable for. Some people would say, no, nah, I want to see it a little bit higher. But as we go down our list here, we're seeing more and more that have a lot of trading activity. Okay, lots of liquidity here, uh, which can be uh, helpful. All right, uh, let's do this now. Let's, I've got a chart here. We're going to bring our chart up. And I've got it linked to this watch list. And I'm going to start down here with the one that has the most volume. Okay. Now, generally, we're not doing technical analysis on these stocks. But like I said, somebody might want to screen it to make sure maybe it meets some technical information that you're interested in, like making sure it's above a 200-day moving average. Yeah, that's a possibility. Could we have built that into the screener? Yes, we could have. Okay, I didn't, but what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna pull a style. Let's grab this style right here. It'll have a 10, a 50, a 100 day, and a 200 day. My 100 day moving in average is this black line. The 200 day moving average is the green line. And so some people, if they wanted to, they could say, you know, I just want to keep the ones that are above their 200-day moving average. Really not trying to say, oh, does it have an entry signal? Is there a hold? Is there a breakout of a triangle, right? Not really looking for that at all. Just that minimum standard. All right, let me look real quick here. Oh, Doug says, yeah, often exports wind up in the downloads folder. And indeed it did. Thank you, Doug, for trying to help me out here. Uh, will this video be loaded to YouTube? My intent is it for it to be posted later today. Uh, we always, of course, have a review of the information before it gets posted. But the intent here, unless we have a major technical issue, um, yeah, it should get posted here either later today or possibly tomorrow. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. Okay, Ben's helping me out there with that one as well. Okay, now what? Let's just look at a few of these. Okay, I'm gonna start down here at the bottom, like I said, as far as volume. So the, the ones with more volume activity, just kind of going through. Out front media, REIT. Uh, some of these, not all of these, some of these may have some fundamental information under the Analyze tab. We go to Analyze, we go to Fundamentals, you want to learn maybe a little bit more about this REIT. Some of them, again, not all of them, but the, the ones that have a lot more trading activity on them may have this little company profile here. And it looks like uh, these guys deal with billboards, transit, and mobile assets. Uh, let's see, it uh, out front will fundamentally change the way ad advertisers engage audiences on the go. Now that's a pretty specific, I would say not very diversified REIT. But if that's like the hot thing that's going on and you're seeing a lot of activity in that way, maybe you're reading news or whatever, you might go, yeah, maybe I wouldn't mind something of that. You come out here, Maybe you look at some of their financials if you want to run through them a little bit. You could do that here. Um, some people might just stick with the basics that we have the screener on, right? The yield, what it's been averaging, and is the company at least holding its own, uh, being up at least 0.01% in the last 12 months. All right. Uh, next one. So this one's well above. It's 200-day moving average, right? The green line's that 200-day. So far, okay, this one barely is. Now, this is interesting on this Kimco. 
sometimes, not always, but sometimes when a stock pulls back to the 200 day moving average, sometimes we see a little bit of a bounce there. Somebody in this scenario is, is, might look at it and say, well, it's been here for a few weeks, or, you know, maybe a month or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. And so they might say, let me see if it has something meaningful, a meaningful bounce to keep it above this 200-day moving average. And then if it looks like maybe it is, perhaps somebody might do that if they are concerned about it being above the 200-day moving average. If they aren't, then it really doesn't matter. If it just meets the criteria of the screener, uh, then that's it. Uh, let's just look at a couple more here. And as I'm kind of just looking at them, and we have our yield column over here, so you have that as a reference as well. How much were they paying, right? Let's see, uh, UNIT, Unity Group, well above the 200-day moving average. And right now, it looks like at one point today, maybe it was a little bit volatile, traded down, but uh, say for the last couple of weeks has been above its 10-day moving average. That's what that blue line is, okay? So very bullish stock right now. Apple Hospitality gets well above its 200-day moving average as well as the other intermediate and long-term moving averages. BRX above the 200-day moving average. PK, which is Parks, uh, Hotels, and Resorts. Uh, this one looks like it's just recently had a high. Now, sometimes people are a little bit concerned about buying a stock that maybe is near a 52-week high. That may not necessarily bother, should bother you, right? Because we still want the stock to be holding its own. If it's in a decent uptrend, then more likely than not, it's holding its own. We could also come over here. I'm just going to pull up a five-week chart to see, well, has it been higher before and in the past? And it has uh, back here. This was in April of 2019, so five years ago. You know, it was up here at 33. Has it, how long has it been steady? How long has it been upward trending? I would say maybe there was some good support down here, about 11 bucks, right? Right in that area. It didn't go lower than that. And then it started to, to develop an uptrend off of that. OK, that might give you a little bit of perspective as well. Now, when I changed it to a weekly chart, remember these moving averages changed to a 200 week moving average, a 100 day or uh, a 100 week moving average and so forth. Uh, they still are the, the same periods. It's just that our frequency changes here when we do that. All right. Now, the ones we have looked at so far. There's Simon Property Group. Uh, I actually had, uh, looks like maybe it's been above 146 for a bit of time here. Pays a 5% plus dividend. The last, I didn't tell you what the 12 months was here. This is how what the price difference in the stock is over the last 12 months. So has it been not very big like this one is up in the last month about 1.88% compared to Simon Property Group, that's up about 35%, compared to VNO, which is up about 51% over the last 12 months. This particular one is already in our portfolio. Let's go to e EQR. Uh, this one above its 200 day, above its 10 day. We should not be surprised that most of these, for the most part, are either flat or upward trending. Okay, so it shouldn't be a big surprise that most of these are above their 200 day. All right, uh, let's see here. Uber driver did not like that peak. I'm sorry, I didn't catch which uh, stock you said that about. Uh, Uber driver says, well, when they're parabolic, it says parabolic will give back and that can happen, right? You've seen that happen with growth stocks. Yeah, if they have a major move, yeah, many times they could pull back as well. And so this is where it kind of goes into your preferences, right? Are you preferring, do you have a preference to maybe the slow steady? 
let's see this one. It pays a four plus percent dividend. And in the last month or the last year, it's up about 3%. If we go out to a three-way or a, a one-year chart, we can see, yeah, it's kind of been sideways the last year, right? Up a little bit from 58 to 60.71 at today's close. Okay, so that might be, even though we're seeing the ups and the downs, that might still be one that over the course of a year is a little bit more stable. Mike says uh, they must pay out 90%. Yes, according to IRS regulations, that is what they do. In fact, um, we we mentioned that at the top of the hour and that that is a differentiator uh, from a real estate investment trust type stock to a regular dividend paying type stock. Uh, Ken says, how can we tell if an investment is held to the 90% regulation? <clears throat> Ken, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plead I don't know the absolute answer to that. What I will say is they have to file papers with the SEC. Okay, the SEC, the governing agency, they will be watching those types of things. Okay, so all publicly traded companies. Now, I will say there are some agency or there are some REITs that are not publicly traded, right? There are privately held REITs. You have to go out searching for those out on the internet, okay? Because they don't go through an exchange, we're not necessarily going to be able to see them here uh, with our screener from Schwab. All right. Uh, Cynthia says maybe HIW. Is HIW on our list here? Let's uh, sort it this way. I don't see an, oh, there it is, H-I-W. Highwood something. The little word's too little for my eyes. Okay, it's above its 10-day moving average. In fact, it's been trading above its 10-day moving average since mid-December. So for the last quarter or so, it's been trading on that 10-day. Well above its 200 and 100 and its intermediate 50-day moving average. Uh, this one has a pretty high yield, 8%, and over the last 12 months, it's up about 6%. So is it holding its own? Yeah, is it space eroding? Well, over the last 12 months, it hasn't, right? It's up at least 6%. Uh, we're going to pause here for just a quick moment. How many of you have not subscribed to the Trader Talks channel yet? How many guilty parties do we have out there? Do we have anybody? I really hope not, but I know this is new to some people. They might not really have caught on yet, okay? Uh, we're gonna come out here to my browser. And I'm just gonna open up regular old YouTube. I have it open on my other screen, but we'll open it up here. And we're gonna put in Trader Talks Schwab. All right. Here's our Trader Talks channel. I'm just going to select on it. When you subscribe, to subscribe, it makes it a lot easier to find our classes, right, that you're interested in taking a look at. So right going on right now is our class right now. Some of the things that have been done recently will show up here. This is another one that I did was uh, we looked at reversal candle patterns of stocks kind of went into some candle reading. So that was last Friday. So that's why I'm saying some of the recent ones are here. And then you can see, well, geez, what's coming up? Oh, if uh, let's see if Ben is on here. Here's Ben Watson. He teaches protective strategies. If you're like, oh yeah, I don't want to miss Ben's class. You might come over here and just click notify me so that you get a notification when it's time for Ben's class, okay? So it just makes it easier for you to find things. You can pull things up by the playlist as well. Uh, if you wanted to catch some of Mike's classes from this actual uh, Generating Income in Your Portfolio webcast, you could pull up that watch list and binge watch some of those webcasts, okay? That is why we encourage you to do it. Uh, it also, improves the algorithm and it allows others to find us as well that maybe aren't subscribed to, to Trader Talks. All right. Well, you guys, I think that is it. Now, good homework assignment, says KB. What would your homework assignment be? I would say go out 
if you like this screener that we did, maybe modify it to some other things you might consider okay, out on the Schwab screener. You could do that. And then maybe start evaluating where your comfort levels are. Okay, there were no right or wrong answers. I brought in some criteria that some traders are interested in, uh, but you might be interested in something completely different. Okay, so that's what I would encourage you to do. All right, let me just check if we have any questions we haven't answered. Uh, let's see, can you search for data storage? Cynthia, if you were to, I'll go back there real quickly and see if that is an option. Let me go back to our screener. That's not it. Uh, our screener, I believe, is right here. You can go into, what we could do is we could go into, uh, I think it's gonna be under basic, which is sectors and industries. All right, and then on the sectors and in industries, you could market specific for real estate, but I don't know that it's gonna be classified into data storage. Now, maybe you might see something here. Maybe it's under specialized, I honestly don't know. You could investigate some of those and see if it does get specialized enough for you. Okay, good question. Appreciate that. Well, you guys, this is our last class, I believe, for the afternoon. So it's time to turn you loose. We just talked about real estate investment trusts, what they are, how you can find them, and maybe considerations before you put some in your portfolio if you decide that they're suitable for you. And we talked about how they generate income potentially, not always, but potentially greater than regular dividend stocks. And of course, we looked at some examples. Ben, thank you so much for your help today. Thank you, each of you, uh, for being here today. Hopefully, Mike will be feeling better next week and he'll be back. At, but join us first thing in the morning. We'll have our trader talks right at the opening bell at 9.30 Eastern time. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.